to Dr. Praveen. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I invite Dr. Riaz, uh, Associate Professor and we are going to acknowledge the Society Hospital to moderate the session. Pra Praveen, I, I, was I muted uh, through? No, 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 sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, Praveen. Um, uh, respected Sandar sir, Asha Kumar sir, um, Jairam Das sir, and uh, um, Parvati madam, I can see, Balakshan sir is there, Sulfi sir is there, Shanga sir. So uh, actually, uh, it is indeed a uh, pleasure to be uh, among uh, all of you. And um, uh, this session, uh, as uh, uh, Sandar sir told, it's a very, very important uh, huh? thing. Uh, for all of us. And because uh, as pediatricians, our uh, uh, major role is uh, not to uh, treat just the illnesses, but to take care of the child in a holistic view. So if we are not uh, looking at the growth and development uh, during the uh, visits the child make, either for uh, um, uh, the immunization or for uh, illnesses, so both the uh, well visits as well as the ill visits, are the opportunities for us to um, uh, look at how the child is developing as well as how the child is growing. And uh, today we have a very uh, eminent speaker, uh, the Sadiq Ji, our dear friend. Uh, he was uh, there uh, as an advisor to me, uh, even after uh, um, uh, completing my pediatrics, uh, like taking up the job uh, where to take it. Because I consulted him regarding joining the health service, then uh, uh, coming back to the medical college, all those things. Even once I consulted him for uh, going abroad also, I think. <laughs> so, uh, welcome Sadiqji to the meeting. And I hand over the uh, mic to Dr. Pramila, who is the chair for the session. Thank you. Good evening, my dear teachers and my friends and my colleagues. Um, it's a pleasant evening. And uh, like Sandorsa said, it's a very important topic, which is, uh, you know, uh, as pediatricians, uh, exactly like um, uh, Ria said, we should be more uh, concentrating on the wellness of the children. See, disease, it's important, but wellness of the, see, if we, if we concentrate on the wellness of the children, how well a baby is growing. So that will help us more. And we have experts. I'll be, I, I told Sadiq sir today that I'm just a chair person sitting there and just uh, looking at what you're doing, because this is a topic. We have an expert there. Sadiq sir himself is an expert in, you know, uh, looking at the, the like uh, immunization, uh, growth, diet of children. So whenever he's a very good uh, history taker, actually, what whenever like to tell about uh, Dr. Sadiq is like whenever you take the history, you take a very good history. Then he comes in and during rounds, he find one extra point there. We as well as the post will think, my God, we asked everything. But this particular point he alone picked up. So that's it. Over to Dr. Sadiq for this. And we have an expert with us, uh, pediatric endocrinologist, Dr. Riaz. And I think Shija is also somewhere around Shija Veena. We have excellent endocrinologists with us we are, who are actually helping us in continuing this uh, growth monitoring. So over to Dr. Sadiq. Good evening, all. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, you are audible. Please. Come. Yes, yes. So I think... Uh... Anyway, uh, in front of my teachers and uh, my colleagues and my PGs. Okay, in, talking in front of PGs, okay, but in, I'm very nervous in talking in front of my teachers. Anyway, uh, so uh, like um, like Pramila said, I was actually asking her to talk and I thought I will chair. Then... Uh, Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Yeah. You can start. I so, request uh, kindly, kindly, I request kindly rest of the rest of the people to uh, mute actually. Because a lot of disturbances coming. Actually, I can see the names which are open, but then it's not fair every time calling out names. So please everybody mute or let the speaker speak. And during the interaction time, we can unmute and speak. Thank you. So, uh, to talk about the growth and uh, actually growth and development comes together when we care the children as pediatricians. It is both uh, part and parcel of um, uh, growth, uh, the, the uh, child's uh, growth. 
and de de development also comes along with it. But today we will discuss mostly about the growth monitoring and a pediatrician's role in uh, not only uh, assessing the weight when he see, sees the child for a particular time, but uh, keeping a track record or monitoring the weight during the further visits or if any uh, falling, fall, um, uh, if the weight or height or any growth parameter is falling out of the normal range, the mother or the caregiver is being alerted. So that will be the road. So maybe the child is coming to you for fever or for a vaccination, but at that time, definitely we'll be assessing a quick, we'll be doing a quick assessment of the growth and development of the child. And uh, well, because a child may be coming for vaccination, you will be picking up uh, autism in that child or a child is coming for vaccination, you'll be picking up pallor. So that will be the way you will be approaching a child whenever a child comes to you. So in many such things we uh, consider when you consult a child, growth monitoring of, of those growth monitoring is very important because in the first, the, the growth which a child is missing in the first few years, child will not be able to get it back at a later age. A height or a head circumference which is not uh, in the proper way or the brain, uh, brain growth which is not in the proper way in the first few years means by the end of second year or third year you, you have lost everything then you cannot go back and do anything so uh, <laughs> with all these experts i think i'll be just starting and giving few basic things about uh, growth monitoring and uh, the further clarifications and the final uh, uh, conclusions will be done by the experts and my teachers over here. So my uh, uh, job is very easy. I can call for help at any time. So uh, why growth monitoring? So a proper growth monitoring can be useful as a screening or even a diagnostic tool to detect only the nutritional issues. Even a systemic disease or a chronic infection or a lot of endocrine abnormalities or some of the genetic disorders may give you a clue. Uh, the the param growth parameters may give you a clue regarding any of these conditions. So when, when any of the parameter is little out of the uh, normalcy, we have to be alert. Why this is like this? Is it just a, a minimal variation from the normalcy or it is something pathological? That should be the way we should approach whenever we see any child. So mainly we'll be talking about the nutritional thing, nutritional factors affecting the growth. But other than that, uh, genetic, parental, gender, and even you know the genetic disorders affect the growth of a child in a significant way. The prenatal condition, the prenatal, um, the mother's health, and uh, any chronic and systemic illnesses will affect the growth very badly. The environmental factors, emotional, psychosocial factors, and uh, more importantly, the endocrine factors also are equally important. Even you, uh, uh, important factors that affect the growth of child, especially in the younger age group. So when you talk about nutrition, more than the undernutrition, now I think we have to talk about overnutrition. So because now when we have started seeing children after the COVID, period of one and a half, one to one and a half, two years, most of the children have gained more than 10 kg in the last one year. I'm not uh, exaggerating or anything. Most of the children, I like last September and this September, today also I was just telling 11.5 kg, one child gained last one year. So this is the way children are having overnutrition. And uh, uh, maybe uh, like uh, before, uh, for the exam, we'll be learning the cal calorie value of vada and dosa. But now uh, I think we have to learn the calorie value of shawarma and uh, uh, noodles, all those things. So uh, these are the new things which are added into the menu of our uh, children. So uh, equally important uh, or more important is overnutrition nowadays. So... Uh, when you follow up a child or when you monitor the growth of a child, it can be very easily done if you use a growth chart. So the various growth chart have been uh, devised right from uh, earlier years. And uh, the WHO 2006 growth chart, including 
different continents and different countries of various strata has given a somewhat acceptable uh, chart for the monitoring of children of different strata. And uh, finally, we have uh, the combined IAP and uh, WHO 2006 growth chart, the details of which Dr. Riaz will be uh, discussing towards the end of today's session. So the main parameters we are monitoring are mainly weight, height, head circumference, weight for height, which is very important in certain situations, and uh, BMI for, for children, especially for knowing the uh, 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 level of adiposity and mainly for um, recognizing the overweight or obese children. So um, uh, we have the uh, growth chart device by the WHO, which is including uh, the different continents and uh, different countries of uh, various socioeconomic strata, including India and uh, African countries and uh, um, developed countries. And uh, uh, it, it represents the growth of uh, uh, children of uh, different socioeconomic status also. So that can be, that is widely accepted. So the multicentric uh, growth reference study, MGRS, including the uh, six countries from five different continents and the WHO growth chart and uh, the IAP, uh, the combined 2006 and uh, IAP 2015 growth chart with uh, Dr. Riaz will be discussing later. So now I think quickly we'll go through a few of the, few of the uh, parameters uh, which actually change rapidly in the initial few years. We know that uh, the weight of a baby doubles by five months and triples by one year and quadruples by two years. And then it is two kg per year or three kg per year at a older age. So three, six, nine, twelve, we can remember easily. For the PGs, that may be an easier term to, easier way to remember. And height also in the first one year child will be go, growing 50% of the birth, birth height. And the later years, nearly half of it till by four year, you are around 100 centimeter and after that six centimeter per year. So 50, 75, 87.5, 90, 300. That way you can remember the height increment, especially in the earlier ages. And later it is five to six centimeter per year. And that's why the formula six X plus 77 for calculating the height. And the head circumference is very important, especially in the earlier months. We know that the first year you, there is an increment of 12 centimeter being two centimeter per month in the being two centimeter per month uh, in the first three months so making it six and the next three months one centimeter per month and in the last uh, six months point five centimeter per month so total of 12 centimeter in a year in the first year and later in the second year two centimeter two three centimeter and later one centimeter and after three years, it is nearly 0.5 or even less than that. So by three to four years, the uh, head size uh, attains uh, uh, the maximum growth. And after that, from three to 18 years, only five centimeter increment will be there in the head circumference. So the, uh, the brain growth or the um, development of the child will be much affected if there is a problem in the first uh, two or three years of the baby's life. So the head growth, uh, as I said, uh, from 35 to 47 and by six years of age attains a, around a 55 centimeter and after that the growth is much minimal. So like the weight, nearly the brain weight also, like the baby's weight, brain weight also doubles by five to six months and triples by one year of age. And by four year majority of the brain growth is completed. So uh, the, still, uh, when you when I, uh, the weight and height, you can just measure and uh, um, uh, plot it immediately. But if you go for a weight for height, it will give you a more uh, or a better idea about the child's uh, nutrition and uh, uh, any um, short um, period of malnutrition or anything you can diagnose by going for a weight for height, which is calculated as uh, actual weight, percentage of the actual weight when compared to the ideal weight. So that uh, 
it is also it, it also helps in diagnosing the obesity and also equally uh, important in uh, diagnosing the acute malnutrition which results in wasting so more than 120 percentage it will be obesity and uh, when it is less than 7 uh, 80% less than 90% or even less than 70 to 80% it will be going for moderate wasting and less than 70% it will be severe wasting the madam circumference is, is still more easier and uh, at any time uh, for a child from 6 months to 60 months by just measuring the mid upper arm circumference you know uh, if it is less than 13.5 uh, as under nutrition and if it is less than 11.5 it is severe malnutrition and between 11.5 to 12.5 it is uh, moderate uh, under nutrition moderate malnutrition so severe malnutrition if it is less than 11.5 and normal if it is more than 13.5 so bma as i said is another um, parameter which you can plot and uh, you can easily <laughs> detect the underweight and the, uh, overweight children mainly um, uh, uh, mainly of ch uh, children who are about two years of age bmi uh, calculating the bmi by the weight in kg by height square in meter the bmi can be calculated and plotted and uh, the variation from normalcy can be detected and uh, obesity or an under nutrition, nutrition can be easily found out so like uh, more than 95 percent of uh, bmi uh, is termed as obesity and uh, less than 5% is um, termed as underweight and uh, 85 to 95 is percent of uh, BMA is termed as overweight also. So uh, when you uh, calculate, when you um, uh, consider the weight or height or the weight, uh, weight for height or height or weight of a ch uh, child, you can either consider the percentile in a centile chart or the percentage of the weight when compared to the median or you can use an Z score for comparing or, or for uh, uh, assessing the uh, variation from the normalcy or uh, for marking for um, uh, calculating the variation from the normalcy so for uh, uh, less than third centile uh, it is considered as malnutrition and uh, for weight less than 80 percent and for height less than 90 percent and weight for weight less than 80 percent is uh, uh, if you consider as the percentage of median and is that score less than two standard deviation is considered as moderate and more than three standard deviation is a is considered as severe uh, uh, malnutrition so in an easier way you can uh, interpret like the weight for age will be less in acute malnutrition and also in chronic malnutrition. And the height for age in acute malnutrition, it takes time for the height to be affected. So in acute malnutrition, height will may be normal. And in chronic malnutrition, definitely standing is the end result. And weight for height in acute malnutrition, definitely it will be low. And in chronic malnutrition, because both the weight and height are affected, it will be normal. So that is the way you can um, is, uh, simply uh, approach the variations in weight height and weight for height. So after by plotting the uh, parameters in a growth chart, um, in a growth chart. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. It's okay. Make, make uh, so in a growth chart, uh, the, we have to be alerted when we see some uh, red flag signs, like the high, uh, the the height, the weight, or the head circumference is less than the third centile or above the ninety seventh centile when you chart it in the centile chart. Or crossing of two major centile lines like 50, 75, 25 or downward upward means it is towards overweight and downward means it is going for malnutrition and bmi as i said about 85th centile or below 50th 50th centile 5th centile 
is the is uh, the, uh, the pediatrician and the caregiver is to be alerted. And uh, above 95th, it is definitely the uh, obesity. And uh, a rate of growth or the increment of height less than five centimeter per year also is a matter of worry. And the uh, child's height not matching with the mid-parental height is, all, is another thing which you have to monitor, especially when you uh, see a uh, child with short stature. So, and uh, there are special growth charts for uh, special populations, uh, various syndromes and uh, counterplacer Down syndrome, and also for preterm babies, uh, better to use the special growth charts. You cannot use the uh, ordinary charts for uh, these conditions. So, um, the, for the growth chart to be used, you can either use your, uh, uh, because uh, most of the time the vaccination card which is given to the baby will be having the growth chart. Or you can, in electronic medical records, you may have the um, growth chart uh, incorporated in it. So, by the when, when uh, uh, either the uh, sister or when the doctor is entering the vitals, it will be automatically reflected and you can have a quick look. And this is the growth chart in the EMR uh, for children up to three years. And, uh, for children above three years, uh, this this includes three: the head sack, head sack fronts, height, weight, and length. And for children above um, three years, the height and weight alone is also uh, recorded. Uh, it's incorporated in the EMR so that uh, it can be used um, a, a much more easily. So, uh, in brief, uh, a proper growth monitoring provides valuable clue. To um, regarding the child's overall well-being, and uh, using a suitable growth chart helps to track any faltering in child's growth much earlier. And uh, for an easy use, the World uh, WHO uh, 2006 and IAP 2015 combined growth chart is ideal for in Indian children. Thank you. Yeah. That is a very short talk, but uh, all the essentials were there. So, Riaz, you can continue from there. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, can I share the screen? Yeah. Uh, Sadiq, sir, can I accept yeah. this? So what uh, we have already discussed is regarding uh, uh, the importance of uh, growth monitoring. And I shall take another 10 minutes uh, uh, during which uh, I will just uh, tell you a tale of a short uh, child. As well as we will have a look into the uh, new additions in our uh, IAP growth chart. There is some modification in the IAP growth chart which has happened, which all of us, all of us should be familiar with. So uh, you can see this child was uh, brought to us with a concern of uh, not growing well, and he was shortest in the class. And whenever uh, some child is brought to me with the complaint of uh, shortest in the class, I am not worried because I myself was shortest in my class. And uh, in all growth charts, I am not below the third centile. So being shortest in the class that doesn't mean always that uh, you are abnormal. Uh, but uh, these were some uh, uh, red flag signs, like the mother was telling his dresses are not getting small and his uh, teeth are not falling at normal age. And he has become shorter than her younger sister or otherwise uh, his uh, younger sister has uh, trespassed him in growth. Uh, so these are very important signs. And um, uh, recently one child was uh, brought to me by the mother. And the uh, mother was telling, uh, my child is not growing, so uh, you should do something like that. So I asked them, um, uh, the, uh, uh, where is the referral from? So there was no referral letter. So uh, the mother told a very interesting story. Mother told the tailor who is uh, stitching the uniform for this uh, particular child for uh, uh, many years has identified that the measurements are uh, not increasing. So um, that is how the child was identified. But if you are monitoring the growth of children properly, then we can identify the children much, much earlier. 
so this is uh, uh, what uh, we found out by doing the bone age as well as uh, plotting the height and weight of the child as was advised by um, Roxadi. Like we can very well see. See the height age is only three years. Height age is only three years for this uh, uh, seven-year-old child actually. Uh, for the, for the, and uh, height age is only three years. And uh, like that, the weight age is six years. So we can very well see that in this child, height age is much affected or height is much affected. The child is um, uh, having affection of the height and uh, the weight is actually in the 10th centile, but height is much, much below the third centile. And it means that this child is having some endocrine problem or a child is some syndromic child. Uh, uh, rather than there is a nutritional cause. When it is a nutritional cause, what we will see is both the height and weight will be uh, lower than the normal centiles or the midparental centiles, but the weight will be much affected. When you take the weightage and heightage, we will see that the weightage is much, much less than the heightage. That is how you identify a nutritional cause. And uh, by using this, um, uh, I also want you to look at uh, the new um, IAP growth chart. See, the IAP growth chart, which was family, familiar to us, uh, doesn't have this part of this uh, scale-like thing. So this is the new addition in our IAP growth chart. Now, this is actually a uh, mid-parental height calculator because uh, in our busy OPD, it is uh, difficult for us to calculate. And uh, as pediatricians and as doctors, we are very averse to do any sort of calculations and this adding and subtracting, dividing, everything is very difficult for us. So this scale actually helps us to uh, go about without doing any of this. So that I will show in the next uh, yes. See, and this is the enlarged part of our door chart which shows the mid parental height scale. So what we here do is we just join, see there are uh, two columns. One is father's height and the other is mother's height. And there is a line in between which shows uh, mid-parental height centile. Uh, and you can see that third centile, 10th centile, 25th centile, 50th, 75th, 90th and uh, 97th, like that you can see. What we have to do is you just join the father's height and mother's height by using a line. For this particular child, the height of the father was 167 and height of the mother was 154. So we, when we join this 167 and 154 in this MBH scale, you can see the midparental centile or midparental height comes between the 10th and the 25th centile. So this is a very valuable information for a pediatrician who is looking at the child. So we have done no calculation. This can be done in uh, less than one minute. And you can very well see the child is actually less than third centile and the mid-parental centile is actually between 10th and 25th. That definitely says this is not a familial short stature. And this child is having some pathological problem. So this is a very useful part of the scheme. And uh, I also want you to look at this part of the chart also, where you can see that in the inset, uh, there, is a, there are three lines you can see. Um, and uh, it is actually, uh, I don't know whether it is very much visible, but I will just uh, read out it for you. It is UW is underweight, OW is overweight, and OB is obesity. So uh, obesity is the red line, Overweight is the uh, orange line and uh, underweight is the black line. So uh, this is actually uh, to do away with our BMA calculation. BMA again is another headache. Uh, we have to use a very complicated formula, get the square root, all of all those things. Many of us now use apps for doing that. But if you are not uh, uh, familiar with that, what we can do is we can use this, uh, just this growth chart. Here we just want to know what is the weight of the child and height of the child. So just uh, um, join the weight of the child with the height and uh, mark the spot in the graph. And you can see if that particular point is coming above the red line, the child is obese. 
if it is between ob and ow the child is overweight if it is between uw and ob that is the black line and the orange line then the child is having normal weight and if it is below uw or underweight then it is underweight so it is very easy to look at uh, whether the child is overweight obese or even thin by just using this insert so these are the two additions in our growth chart and this growth chart is available from our iap website uh, free of cost we can take any number of forms and um, whenever we do the growth chart and uh, do the uh, growth monitoring it is also important to uh, look at the clinical signs like that uh, what we uh, do we can see that uh, uh, the uh, there is a pectus excavatum and hello i can okay okay i can i can i can hear yeah. see there, there is a pectus excavatum here you can see so this uh, tells us about uh, many many uh, possibilities this could be uh, a turner syndrome child and you can see that uh, uh, there is a, a single central incisor the uh, upper row we can see instead of two incisors here there is only one large incisor so the single central incisor is a sign of hypopituitarism and uh, like that uh, uh, you can see these are telltale evidences of uh, growth hormone deficiency like you can see that the frontal bossing is there there is blue sclera the saddle nose and uh, uh, this child is having this cherubic uh, uh, facies so this can be a, a child who is having a glycogen storage disease and uh, who is short so this is the knuckle sign or the shortness of the fourth metacarpal which again tells you this could be a child who is having a turner syndrome or a hypoparathyroidism so this is the trident hand of uh, achondroplasia so these are caphelius spots which will tell you the shortness is due to some uh, uh, neurocutaneous syndrome and uh, this is our own child we can see that there is a frontal bossing there is saddle nose and all those things and i also have uh, one more tool that is uh, uh, my teacher shankar sir in the next room because uh, he will just see the child and diagnose whether it is a syndrome and um, regarding examination whenever you see a child we should always think about uh, a child who is short we, we should always think about uh, systemic uh, causes like it could be an senotic congenital heart disease where again the affection of the weight will be more uh, all children who is having heart failure uh, they will be emaciated children rather than standard and uh, those who are having severe respiratory illness so the, 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 these two we will find very easily but chronic renal failure is something which we can miss because there won't be much signs till the child is ready for a dialysis the child is uh, sick so we should look for pallor we should look for hypertension uh, things like that and the uh, syndromes always uh, down syndrome most of the time we will identify it clinically but turner syndrome is something where the child can present only with one sign that is uh, short stature then skeletal dysplasia as we should be uh, thinking about we should do an upper segment lower segment ratio and also remember what is the normal upper segment lower segment ratio at different ages so this particular child we can also look at the height velocity chart height velocity chart is something uh, very useful in uh, assessing whether the uh, child is having uh, a real um, issue with growth and uh, we should know that uh, while we take the third centile see in the new uh, growth chart uh, instead of the third centile it is written it is a red line and it is written any child below this is short uh, so third centile is the cut off for a short stature in the population growth chart on the height and weight chart while in height velocity chart it is the 25th centile if you are seeing that the height velocity is less than 25th centile then that means the child is having a growth problem or poor growth or poor growth velocity and uh, the these are the lab tests which we should run uh, 
um, the first tire uh, should be done uh, in uh, any hospital before referring itself because uh, hypothyroidism is something which we can very easily diagnose, we, which can be easily treated and can be followed up uh, in a pediatric clinic. And always look at the creatinine because uh, as I told, uh, we may miss a, um, a renal chronic renal failure condition. Always look for uh, electrolytes, there, it could be an RTA and also calcium profile. And uh, in the uh, second line, we may think about again a urine pH, bicarbonate, uh, other hormones like cortisol. Why FSH is if you are, uh, um, um, uh, if there is a long waiting period for the karyotype in uh, older children, high FSH will uh, uh, tell you that this is a case of Turner syndrome. And always think about uh, celiac disease. And uh, before uh, going in for uh, assay for growth hormone, the growth hormone access test should start with the IGF-1 as well as IGF-BP3 levels. And then we go for a growth hormone assay as well as uh, going for MRI brain only in selected cases. And um, we should also know the limitations of uh, doing IGF-1 and IGF-BP3. It is uh, not very useful in infants. And IGF-1 can be uh, used as a screening test in older children before embarking on the uh, growth hormone stimulation test. And uh, we should also know that IGF-BP3, uh, IGF uh, which is um, uh, less available, uh, is more uh, um, uh, convincing uh, for a growth hormone access problem. And whenever we do a growth hormone assay, uh, make sure that we don't do a single test, a single basal value of growth hormone assay doesn't carry any value at all because growth hormone is a pulsatile hormone and we need to do multiple um, uh, levels at uh, multiple times. Then only we, we get a uh, uh, right value. And whenever we do an assay, uh, any value of less than seven, we take as uh, um, the child, is, uh, uh, child has failed the test. So whenever we do a test for four times or five times, whenever we uh, get samples for four or five times and all the samples are less than seven, then only we say the child has failed the growth hormone assay and the child is having growth hormone deficiency. If at least one value is more than seven, then uh, the child has passed the test. We should not consider growth hormone deficiency. And um, uh, ideally, we have to do two standard provocative tests. Uh, then uh, the, it is a, like a gold standard, 100%. But most of us only do one test, which is the clonidine test. And uh, it is sufficient for uh, um, the child who is having all the features of growth hormone deficiency or hypopituitarism, a child who is already having a setting like a CNS tumor, surgery, or irradiation. And sex hormone priming is something important because uh, in children who are, uh, or in girls who are more than eight years and boys who are uh, more than uh, 10 years, it is always better to do the test after giving a priming dose of sex hormone, either estrogen or uh, testosterone. Because otherwise, as uh, during the adolescent age, these uh, sex hormones are needed uh, for uh, uh, proper release and uh, synthesis of growth hormone, uh, it may show a, a false value. So it is always better you do a sex hormone priming for such children. So in our child, the thyroid profile was normal, baseline cortisol was normal, uh, IGF-1 was low, and uh, we did the growth hormone assay and we found all the values were less than 5 nanogram per ml, and the child was started on growth hormone. So uh, when we say this, when we are telling about short children, we should not uh, judge that all children who are short are abnormal. They may not be. And this is uh, one study from uh, our own region. And it says that uh, uh, around 60% of boys and 50% of girls who are short are actually normal variant short stature. That is either they are having a constitutional delay in growth and puberty or a familial short stature, both are uh, innocuous, both are not pathological, uh, which doesn't need any treatment at all. So we need to assess all children, we need to monitor all children, but we need not judge everyone as abnormal. And uh, uh, always remember systemic diseases contribute to shortness, as well as malnutrition contributes to shortness and uh, endocrine uh, conditions are uh, actually much, much rarer than uh, what we think. And with that, I end. Uh, I think uh, we shall take questions after uh, um, Pramila's comments. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. So, um, so a pediatrician has told us the basics, how to monitor. That's the most important part. So rather than a single uh, point, it is actually tracking of the growth, which is very important. So in my personal practice also, what I felt is like the tracking is more important because when you get a child with growth faltering, if you don't have the track record, it's very difficult. So I think that uh, practice of charting, whenever they come for the well baby visits, it's very important. So Sadiq sir has taken us through that part and now Riyas has concluded with more uh, important points of differentiating with this. So I think uh, uh, it's open for discussion. So my conclusion is this, that every pediatrician, uh, when you see a child, whether it's for vaccination or whether it's for a, a illness, they come to you, well baby or a sick baby, make sure that the growth chart is plotted well. So it is very important. We just have to know that uh, they are growing well. Okay, so that is a practice which we all are doing, but we have to be more careful and we have to sincerely do it. That's all my final comments. So we'll take questions because uh, this is a topic which will have many doubts, many queries, how to go about it. So we are now open for questions. If anybody, you can put in the chat box or you can unmute and ask directly. Thank you. Pramila, uh, I have two questions to Sadiq. Okay. Sulfikar here. Can you hear me, Sadiq? Not questions, yes, clarification. Sir. Because you usually we teach our undergraduates and postgraduates that you know birth weight triples at uh, one year, but uh, that basically uh, is confined to babies who are born normal weight. No, suppose your baby is a low birth weight baby, like two kilograms. So what do you do? I mean, how do you calculate grossly expected? Yes, yeah, sir. So preterm babies, anyway, we have to follow the uh, preterm pre growth chart. So, uh, because one kg child, but nowadays what is happening is one kg child by the end of one year is becoming nine kg. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but uh, suppose, uh, suppose uh, should not go, people should not go with an impression that, uh, you know, you have 1.5 kilogram birth weight and 4.5 is good. Excellent. So uh, the, then uh, we are, what we have to do is whether the baby is following we add six kilograms uh, preterm growth chart in the same centile as the baby is uh, uh, when compared to the weight of the baby at birth. I have another doubt. Is uh, Dine's formula is it archaic? Uh, is it uh, is it history or it is is it present? Do we do this? Riaz also yeah. can contribute. Dine's formula is basically for yes. your head, head circumference. So, yes, uh, uh, this question you used to ask us when we were PG, sir. You are still continuing that. Okay, Riaz. <laughs> sir, sir, actually, I, I, I ask uh, all our postgraduates to use uh, growth charts rather than mm. formulas. formula. Formula, correct. Uh, the mm. problem with the formula is like, um, uh, oh, uh, the, everything doesn't fit to a single size. Sir, because right. every child has his own growth. And uh, when we monitor the growth of children, actually, it is very interesting, sir. Because if we uh, the see a child who was in the 10th centile at one year of age, he will grow in the same centile, like a tightrope walking in the 10th centile itself for so many years, if nothing else happens. Uh, if you don't intervene or uh, um, uh, if some disease comes in or something like that. So I think uh, the gold standard is always growth chart. Growth chart. So all those formulae which we, we our older generation used to learn during our PG days are not very relevant, right? And yeah. now I think your chart has become very simple also, no? That yes, WHO, yes, sir. Yes, sir. IAP. I think the first time I am seeing this, so I think it is... Uh, it's a very, very recent modification, sir. Uh, maybe two years. like one Very or useful. Years. I mean, very especially for uh, lazy people. Uh, it's very, very, very useful. Thank you. Yeah, sir. Uh, sir, for lazy people, even EMR is more helpful. You just have to enter the weight and height, the BMI, everything will be but, there. And the growth but, chart is automatically plotted. But, no, even you don't have to enter. The sister will be entering. You just have to <laughs> the, the just go to the page enter. and see. You just have to observe. Height and weight entered. So the BMI, the everything, the growth chart. Everything will come. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Another question, the chat box is there. I think Riaz can take that. It is from Dr. Kiran. Uh, in a girl child with short stature, should we screen for Turner syndrome, even if other features of the syndrome are absent? Okay, okay. So that is a very, very important question. And uh, this is our Kiran, is this our Kiran? Uh, Kiran N, uh -huh. our cardiologist? No. No, okay. 
Okay. I think it is it is our Kiran from oh. SAT. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can see Kiran. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And, go ahead. Uh, uh, I think Shankar sir is here uh, because uh, sir has uh, made a beautiful paper uh, in one of the pedicons. Why we should uh, suspect um, uh, Turner syndrome in all short children? Uh, because um, uh, he found out that uh, most of these Turner's children were actually identified by gynecologists rather than us when they go for um, uh, uh, what you call this um, delayed puberty at the age of 18 or so. So it is our duty to uh, do a karyotype in any girl child if you don't find any other reason, even without uh, any physical stigmata, we should suspect uh, uh, Turner syndrome and uh, do a karyotype. We have many children, I think Shija, uh, if Shija is here, she will also agree. Many uh, Turner syndrome children won't be having any other physical stigmata other than uh, short stature. Okay. Same true for uh, hypothyroidism also, just short stature and nothing else. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I think uh, uh, the most cost effective test we can run for a short stature child is actually a thyroid a thyroid profile because yes, it's... Uh, you identify it and you treat it, the child grows like anything. And uh, one important thing is we should identify such children as early as possible. That is important because what happens sometimes is even uh, this um, juvenile hypothyroidism, that is uh, the acute hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, uh, which uh, occurs later in life, like six years, seven years. Uh, if you delay the treatment, what will happen is once you start treatment, uh, the bondage will advance in a very fast way and uh, the child can have an early puberty. So ultimate height will be low. They don't reach the actual catcher. So uh, thinking about or suspecting hypothyroidism uh, is very, very important so that we can run a test, find it out early and treat. Okay. Uh, just wanted to ask something to Sadik sir as well as we ask one by one you can answer because what are the challenges uh, which is associated with your growth monitoring what are the real challenges we face which is you know uh, what are the real challenges you face when monitoring your growth? like a date is not correct or things like that in your personal practice what have you noticed uh, first to Sadik sir then to Riyas actually uh, the main uh, problem is the parental anxiety which I have seen especially like see uh, just uh, the child's height or weight is slightly low, half kg less or just below the uh, you know, but uh, with uh, when you explain it with a growth chart so you can say this see this is much above the lower limit so if you explain with a low uh, growth chart the parental anxiety will be less otherwise if you are telling the mother uh, you, you see um, uh, we have seen children um uh, they will be coming in a very desperate situation the child's weight may be 2.5 at birth and now the child is 8.5 only and the, um, the both the parents are worried and they are coming to you for this half kg below the uh, so-called expected normal so they are uh, in such children if you show, plot either the even the one time wait or even a wait for the next two three visits and show them see this this is the way your baby is growing and see this is much above the minimum weight which is required for this age then the parental anxiety the parents will be um, uh, happy and another thing which i have seen is see somebody at some time will say your child is half kg less and with that the mother is having sleepless nights and uh, the baby finally is becoming obese at the age of five or ten that is a usual story so I think uh, some of us are overreacting to the uh, little less underweight means uh, um, like half kg, quarter kg less than the expected normal, so-called ex expected normal. So if such uh, to such parents, if you use the growth chart and tell them, see, this is the position your child uh, child's weight. Last time it was here, this time it is here. It is increasing in this way, and this is much above the minimum required for this age. I think the parents will be happy or the uh, ninety nine percent of their attention will be over, and uh, finally, it will not end up in um, obesity. Because what I have seen is all the children which I see, um, or which are coming to me with a half kg or one kg less at one or two years, finally by ten years they are overweight. Uh, it is not my fault, but uh, that is the tension they are having. So okay. anyway, I used to want them. 
definitely you will be coming back to being at the age of 10 with overweight. This is the usual sentence I used to tell them. Okay, Riyas, you can add on me. So actually, uh, Pramila was asking about the um, Challenge. um, Challenge. uh, challenges in uh, uh, not getting it done also because uh, Sadik ji uh, well explained that uh, what is the problem uh, of monitoring itself uh, and uh, um, uh, why it is uh, not plotted. One thing, um, uh, uh, but I believe is uh, uh, we should actually explain to the parents regarding the importance of growth monitoring. And um, many of these parents do it actually uh, by themselves, by just plotting the height in the wall at uh, their own homes. <laughs> and uh, ultimately it gets painted and uh, no one uh, knows what it was. And many of the children coming to us for short stature doesn't have a growth record at all. Uh, uh, in the peripubertal age, when they come with a borderline short stature, uh, we ourselves are not uh, very sure uh, whether to wait or uh, we should we act at that time uh, because we don't know uh, what was the uh, uh, height um, uh, six months before or one year before. So that will be a very valuable information uh, to make a decision whether to go in for some test or whether to, to treat or whether to reassure, uh, things like that. And another important thing is we should all as pediatricians, and pediatricians we should be very meticulous in plotting the, the birth length. The birth weight always we plot, but birth length uh, in many uh, records it may be missing. Uh, so, uh, especially in infants and younger children, it is very difficult to find out whether the child is uh, growing properly. Uh, regarding this, um, uh, children who are actually small in the initial um, years and then getting obese, uh, we should actually educate them, as uh, Sadiji very well explained, uh, because um, the most uh, of the parents are very much worried somewhere near uh, the, uh, the second year of life. Because um, it was like uh, every time when they are coming from 3 kg, they had become 10 kg. And uh, now the weight is not at all moving at all. <laughs> so that is a major problem. So we should uh, explain to them only 2 kg need to be gained in the second year of life. That is uh, nature's rule. And that is why your child is eating less also. The child need to eat less only. Uh, we need not be fussy about that. So like that, we have to take some time and explain so that uh, uh, we do this. And uh, now every immunization visit, we should make sure that weight and height is plotted and uh, uh, the um, the uh, parents are carrying this card or otherwise an EMR record or otherwise an app. Uh, I think rather than an EMR record, an app or a chart with the parent is also important because uh, our uh, patients um, uh, go from one hospital to another hospital and we don't have a universal access of EMRs across hospitals. So that is an issue. Thank you. Okay, uh, in the chat box, there's one question. I think uh, this is endocrine uh, for uh, Rias. Uh, clonidine stimulation, do we go by the strength of the tablet, tablet, I think? By actual free base in each tab. Also, how to take 150 microgram as there is no such strength? Can we do it as OP test? That's one question on clonidine stimulation. Uh, that is a little outside the uh, topic of today, but still you can answer in one sentence. Okay. The second question is how common is celiac disease in Kerala? as it's an easily treatable cause of short stature. And uh, um, regarding the first question, clonidine uh, test or uh, uh, giving clonidine and then measuring the growth hormone multiple times, that is every half an hour for uh, four or five times is the uh, method most of us use. And um, uh, the dose is actually 150 microgram per meter square. We have to calculate it like that. The tablet available is 100 microgram. And uh, uh, whenever you do this test, it is always better to admit the child, uh, at least in the ER, because uh, clonidine can cause hypotension. It's so always better you put in a cannula and uh, then start the test and keep a saline ready. Actually, I'm happy if the child uh, gets a uh, BP fall because that uh, tells you that the, um, the child is stimulated well so that you can believe the growth hormone values, but we should be ready with a normal saline to treat that. That is all. And regarding the second question, I am seeing Jaram Das sir here. Uh, sir, uh, uh, regarding any number of cases of celiac disease, I do have, uh, personally, I do have very few cases, maybe one or two cases. 
I have seen and uh, with uh, Prashant. That's it. Extremely rare. Extremely rare. I have uh, often, I can say, one or two cases from Middle Kerala I have seen. Uh, uh, detected while I was in the Middle East in Oman. Here, uh, locally, I have not found anybody. So, uh, we can take one or two questions, last two questions, if anybody wants to pitch in and answer. Uh, can I talk? Yeah, sure, Ashok, sir. Uh, I was wondering where, what happened, where you went. <laughs> I was blamed of talking too much, so I am keeping quiet. <laughs> uh, um, congratulations, Sadi. Uh, so this is the beginning. So every month you should do a talk somewhere in IAP fora or somewhere. Take this occasion. And uh, I think today you have shown that you are capable of doing a very good presentation. And uh, go ahead and wish you a very good future. And uh, uh, Riaz, uh, endocrine. Uh, the areas is the problem of growth monitoring from endocrine point of view. Sadik mostly of a nutrition point of view. So there is a difference in the point of view. But actually, it was, I think, in the uh, 1970s, uh, David Morley started this Road to Health chart and uh, Anganwadi workers like uh, rural areas. Actually, this uh, there is no point in staying monitoring in the Kims and SAT, but rural areas, this should happen in Anganwadis and all. The problem is not having a good weighing machine, believable, reliable weighing machine. So, but, uh, and the one another thing is like a ration card, uh, the parents are proudly showing off their ration card or Aadhaar card. The child should have a, a growth card also. It should be made compulsory. Aadhaar card. And we should print. I, I think IAP should take initiative to print a, a growth card chart and uh, giving it uh, from the um, primary health center. So that is very important and they can carry it whenever they visit a doctor. The doctor can, can plot and all that. Uh, so very well done, Sadiq. Well done. Riyas and well moderated by Pramila. Wish you all the best. Thank, Thank you, sir. Sandar, sir. Sandar, sir. sir. Dr. Uh, uh, Praveen, are you there? No meeting is complete without Sandar, sir. Yeah. Uh, commenting yes, sir. Uh, see, uh, now these um, ASHA workers and all are given uh, tabs and some apps and all. I mean, uh, do they plot uh, in that or uh, actually I am now out of touch with the what is happening in the periphery? So, okay. If you know, can you update? Yes, sir. Basically, this uh, data collection regarding the antenatal eligible couples and uh, the children, including the children, is uh, happening in the RCS portal, online portal. And uh, they can uh, real-time update from the field itself. So, so that uh, includes uh, this measurements also? Weight, height and all? Yes, 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 sir. Including okay. immunization, everything. But I so, that, be that means that is accessible from everywhere, no? Anywhere we can access that, right? Whether that uh, child is going to one hospital or other hospital. No, no. The, the, the doctors don't have access to it. Only the oh, state, I see. state level mm -hmm. team, RCS team and the DMO can access that. And also the state level team. And actually that is not connected to the e-health. Mm -hmm. e the e-health is running parallel. So there is actually no connection between that. I think uh, most of the parents are having smartphone nowadays and uh, if we can tell them how to operate the app, uh, I think uh, they can process it in their own smartphone and uh, carry it around. And regarding height, I think uh, uh, now there is an obsession of uh, becoming uh, taller. Uh, like uh, everybody would like to be uh, in the similar bracket, which is actually very boring. How boring it will be if all of us are like Amitabh Bachchan. So I think uh, that uh, uh, individual uh, um, child being shorter than the average child is okay. But uh, they somehow uh, uh, get uh, 
some influence and uh, make us uh, uh, give them growth hormone because growth hormone now even um, idiopathic short stature they are giving so i think it's, it is approved also is it not uh, dr yes uh, sir actually um, um, there are so many indications of growth hormone uh, nowadays uh, um, uh, other than the classical indication of growth hormone deficiency na counterplasia even no ah even counterplasia counterplasia they give in uh, some kids Uh, sir you may be knowing about the uh, government program for uh, um, growth hormone deficiency and uh, that has been started but uh, there the indication is very strict it is only for growth hormone deficiency and uh, for those children who had undergone treatment for uh, some cancer um, and uh, secondary to that the child is getting growth hormone deficiency or in the case of hypopituitarism so this will be the only three indications it will be given through the government <laughs> yes uh, we can we, we can ask amila women prefer tall men that's one <laughs> one of the reasons everybody wants to be like amita bachchan <laughs> in my growth hormone or growth speech i used to say this in america the presidential competition the taller candidate always win so in america yes. they have got lot of a importance for the height of the president but in india I, I, the other extreme is lal bahadur shastri who, who became prime minister he was only 5 feet so there is difference in the cultures so yes, sir um uh, sir no further questions uh, pravin can you yeah yeah, yeah. thank you uh, team uh, team self and for organizing a very <laughs> program with a very relevant topic uh, in association with IIP Trivandrum. I thank today's speaker uh, Sadik sir for the very excellent presentation. Also, uh, our chairperson Dr. Pramila Joji and uh, moderator Dr. Riyas. And I also thank all the senior faculty, Sashok Kumar sir, Sulphi sir, Gunju sir, Changar sir, uh, Jairam das sir for all the valuable inputs. I also thank all the participants who have attended the program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, sir. sir. Sadik sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Praveen. Okay, good night. Okay, good night, sir. Good night. We need. Thank you. You're there. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Close. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank Close. you. Thank Close. you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Sir.